Our top story now. Syria's turmoil has been laid bare on our TV screens for more than a year. But some networks are being accused of affecting rather than reflecting the conflict. Maria Fanoshna reports now on how there's more to the coverage on the Qatari-owned Al Jazeera TV channel than meets the eye. Clashes in the streets of Syria have been raging for a year now, but behind the scenes there is a media war that's just as damaging as the one taking Syrian lives. Rafik Lotf, freelance investigative journalist from Damascus, says he's found what he thinks is proof of media manipulation of the conflict in Syria. In this video from the Syrian town of Homs, the camera focuses on the city's oil refinery. The shooting begins seven hours before media viewers around the world see a pipeline explosion allegedly caused by Assad's army bombardment. You can clearly see that something is slowly burning in the distance. When the smoke has thickened, English speakers correct the camera's position for a better shot of what's going on. They shake it to make it look like amateur video. I know this video is on the Al Jazeera server. It's clear it's not an explosion, but they ignore that and keep on reporting it the way they need to see it. In another video from a hospital in Homs, someone behind camera talks to a doctor. In the corner, we see little Nakham. When you are on air, you should tell Bashar God will punish you and then talk about his wife, OK? Let's rehearsal again. After some 30 minutes of waiting, the crew starts to get nervous. Let's call Al Arabiya, maybe. For how long can we wait? No, we need Al Jazeera. While live on Al Jazeera eventually, the girl will forget some details. God punish you, Bashar, and your children. In this footage, we see Danny, a Homs activist known for his exclusive reports from the very epicenter of the conflict. He's preparing to go live on CNN, and there is no shooting until he asks for it. What shall I say? Tell them there are some buildings collapsed and we're taking bodies away. You, you see there could be as many as 200 dead, dead just in the last hour or two. We have 200 dead in the last three hours. In the first half an hour we've got 40 dead in the first half an hour. And we got the video up on YouTube. The activists who become journalists try to make their shows as hard as possible. The more blood and death, the higher the price. But not everyone is happy about it. Well-known war correspondent Ali Hashem used to report for Al Jazeera from the world's conflict hotspots, but Syria has become the Rubicon he couldn't cross. He mentioned armed groups fighting against Assad's army, and his bosses in Doha told him he needed a vacation. Ali has just resigned because of biased coverage, he says. Some were like, uh, uh, you know, promoting the, the revolutions in Libya, Syria, uh, uh, Egypt, Tunisia, whatever, and, and dumping, for example, the, the revolution in Bahrain and, and Saudi Arabia. The Al Jazeera chief in Beirut, where Ali has been working, has also quit for the same reason. We started to invite guests from America who only criticize the regime in Syria and support the regime in Bahrain, and persons who justify NATO intervention. This is unacceptable. The media in this is just a proxy. It's a proxy used by by external factors, by external factions, by external governments, by maybe the West, whoever, to fuel these wars. With more and more proof emerging of the international media's involvement in the Arab Spring revolutions, the question remains open. To what extent do they influence events and how much responsibility do they therefore share for what follows? Marif Noshina, RT, Beirut, Lebanon.